This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and we have another Caliphone school record player, one of the blue ones, obviously. It's a model 1450K, and it's in pretty good cosmetic shape, not perfect. We got some few little dings right here and right here. Uh, this was one of the more upscale models. It has separate bass and treble controls and a microphone input. And it is from 1976. I've already peeked inside. And this model has a, a button. It's called a backspace button. It was really just a gimmick that, were, that was available briefly on some 1450K and 1455K models as an option. Now the 1455K has a variable pitch control. And I'll show you what this backspace button does here. So you uh, press the button and then release it down slowly and it moves the arm backwards just a little bit so you can so if you want to listen to a uh, a passage on the record over again then that's supposed to make it easier to do that or as you could just really you could just pick up the tone arm and move it back and you don't need this little gimmicky thing and I guess Califone figured that out because they didn't offer that feature long now this record player works but it sounds like garbage And you might not can tell it so much on the camera, but it does it does not sound as good as it should and it tends to rattle sometimes and I will show you why in just a minute. I know this thing has had a lot of hours on it because the light at the end of the tone arm is burned out. And the cartridge is one of these red fan steel single sided uh, 89Ts with an LP tip on it. That was the last version they made, and I really don't care for them because they they don't seem to track all that well, and they only play one half of a stereo record, whereas the Astatic Originals track better, and they combine the uh, left and right for mono. So let's get this open, and I'll show you why it sounds so bad, and you're going to love this. This will this will win the award for crappiest repair attempt ever made and by this having the red cartridge that tells me that this record player was in service into the 21st century I don't know when fan steel started making these red cartridges but it was definitely sometime in the 21st century and it's just a single-sided diamond 0.7 mil LP tip and if you wanted 78 then you had to order the green cartridge and swap the two out and i don't like that idea i like just one that i can just flip back and forth so and given that the old style 89 t's are no longer made and new old stock ones are becoming scarce and expensive then we're just going to have to come up with some other type of cartridge option for this probably a tetrad in a preamp circuit but I don't want to go there today I want to focus on this sloppy repair that you're about to see and here's the sloppy repair originally this would have had a 6x9 speaker and what somebody done they took two 4 inch speakers and you can see this one looks like it's been had its cone repaired and tied the speakers together and mounted them where the existing speaker would have gone and then they also took a third speaker and bolted it to the bottom of the uh, cabinet here so let's get this mess out and see what we can do i think we can find a six by nine speaker somewhere and they stuck this plastic in here to to help prevent the speakers from rattling now one weak part about these caliphones are these plastic spring type speaker mounts I've got two or three caliphones that these are broken on and I'm gonna have to devise a way to fix those they should have made those out of metal spring steel and in that way they wouldn't break so easily 
Another mistake they made is they had these three speakers wired in parallel. Now, these are probably 8 ohm speakers. I'll look at them closely in a minute. Well, they said the minimum load impedance on these California amplifiers is 4 ohms. So obviously three 8 ohm speakers in parallel will be less than 4 ohms. So that's not doing our amplifier any favors. And they didn't even have the leads, saw the wires soldered to the speaker terminals. They just had them loosely wrapped around the speaker terminals and that was it. It's a wonder the thing worked as long as it did. Okay, this is a JVC speaker. Does that say 3 ohms? Well, that's even worse. So we have this 3 ohm speaker in parallel with this 3.2 ohm speaker. And then we have another speaker here. I don't see an impedance on that one, but yeah, it's a wonder they didn't fry the amplifier in this thing. Alright, here's the DC resistance of those three speakers in parallel, 1.6 ohms. Actually, it's probably a little less than that because we read about, what, about 0.7 ohms, the, the uh, probe, uh, the test lead resistance, so probably about 1 ohm or maybe less. Okay, on this particular meter, it's measuring exactly zero ohms with the uh, test lead shorted together. So, yeah, so the reading we got was probably a pretty accurate representation of the DC resistance of, this, of these three speakers wired in parallel. Not good for the uh, amplifier. Here's the speaker that I'm going to try. Uh, DC resistance of about 15.6 ohms, so this would be considered a 16 ohm speaker. Uh, that would be preferable than a, a basically a 1.5 ohm speaker, so we'll try it and see how it does. Alright, and that's how it's supposed to look, my friends. Now this is a speaker I had to patch a small tear in the cone, but it should be okay. Alright, let's put it back together and see what it sounds like. That's better. Yeah, don't take my word for it. Here's the external speaker or headset jack. Uh, brings back memories of those multiple headset listening stations that had six or eight headsets. To a station and, and an individual volume control on each headset. I remember in first grade the teacher getting us in groups of six or eight to sit at the table and listen to something through the headphones either on the record player or the cassette player while she had the other class doing something else and then when we'd get through listening to whatever she'd sit another group down and let them listen to it. But here we go, external speaker jack. Plug in external speaker or headphones rated at four or more ohms. Well, that that was on here was way less than four ohms. And like I said, it's a wonder it didn't damage the uh, amplifier. It's like placing a short across the, the uh, speaker output. Now, we're not going to do a full-blown overhaul on this today. I don't have time for that. But at least I've got it to a point where I can use it and not risk burning up the amplifier. And it does sound better, but when we have time to devote to this, we'll do an overhaul on the drive mechanism and we'll replace the lamp in the, uh, in the uh, tone arm and then we'll come up with some kind of an alternative for the now expensive and scarce 89T cartridge. And all I'll say about the cartridge right now is the original puts out 1.3 volts. Uh, something like a Tetrad, which is something we would have to use if we want to retain our tone arm lamp. Because that would be the only thing small enough to fit in there. Uh, that only puts out about a half a volt. And when you feed a half a volt into these amplifiers that are designed for a cartridge with 1.3 volts, 
it just sounds weak and tinny and it's just not just doesn't sound very good and part of the reason for that is these have a loudness compensated volume control and that's another reason they need the hot signal so we're going to have to build some kind of little high impedance preamp with an FET to put between the cartridge output and amplifier input now back in the day this little plug-in 89T cartridge was a good idea for record players like this they were cheap no more than about five bucks and if the needle went bad or the cartridge went went bad the whole thing could easily be unplugged and replaced by anybody and it didn't involve taking the record player out of service to uh, have a technician replace the cartridge now of course the 89 the uh, test trad cartridge you know that'll be a conventional cartridge but seeing as how this probably won't be used in a rough school environment ever again I don't think it'll matter these 89 T's were built rugged and designed to withstand uh, rough abuse in these that's often subjected to these school record players now one last thing I'll say about this is I hope whoever worked on this did not operate an electronics repair shop if they did they need they needed to have been ran out of business because there's just no excuse in doing sloppy repair work like that I have an idea whoever fixed this was probably the uh, school maintenance man not calling school maintenance men idiots but school maintenance men often do not know about electronics you know they're 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 good at keeping the place clean and and making mechanical repairs to certain things and I know some of that often involves jake legging with materials that they had on hand but in the case of this record player I have to ask myself was it so hard to find a six by nine speaker somewhere I mean no they're not as easy to find today as they were 30 years ago but they're still out there and they can be found even a six by nine inch car radio speaker would have been preferable to what they had in here I think what they had in here was just bits and pieces of crap that they salvaged from other equipment and just clutched it in here to to get the record player playing again but that don't mean it's an acceptable uh, process all right so there you go uh, just a lesson don't take shortcuts if you can't do it right then probably just need not to do it at all because the way they did it was totally unsatisfactory and could have very well caused more damage to the instrument and something else they did I knew this tone arm felt a little heavy and it looks like they raised the tracking pressure by moving the spring further back probably to compensate for this red cartridge that I've already mentioned is not the most compliant thing in the world and likes to skip so we'll have to reset that too at a later time I was looking at static 89T cartridges on eBay here's one $45 plus shipping $73.49 for a fan steel uh, replacement which I would not bother with $49.95 new old bliss ceramic aesthetic 89t needle replacement that looks like a that may be the diamond version since that's in a gold body but yeah 50 bucks and that's something I got a bid on I can't just buy it outright 80 bucks for that one 73.49 for the uh, green 78 version I can get those from the VM site for about 22 23 bucks uh, 67.49 for that one uh, that's just a box and here's the kicker $199 for that one now I think for 200 bucks I could buy a pretty darn jam up magnetic cartridge for that amount of money 
All right, let's look at the 89 TX equivalent, the diamond version. Then we'll look at 81T and 81TX and see if we find any better deals. All right, looking at 81TXs, I see somebody has a one of the red fan steel ones for 10 bucks plus five dollars shipping. But knowing what low quality those are, I wouldn't even pay ten dollars for one. Here's a 911 S13 for $11.95. That's an older one, but those are not that great either. And here's even another one. Now, if those were Astatic Originals, I would be all over them. But these, uh, these fan steel ones like this, they're really not that great. So we're not going to bother with those. All right, this is the cheapest one I found after doing a little looking. $33.99, free shipping, new old stock, Electra Voice, EV81 cartridge, replaces a static 81T. Now let's see who's selling this. Is it a actual needle vendor? Uh, I don't think so. I think this is probably just one of your uh, A to Z uh, eBay flippers. It probably found a bunch of junk at an estate sale. New old stock, Electra Voice, 81 phonograph cartridge, dual style I, LP, and 78. Now, there's a problem from buying from people like this who were, well, let's look at their other items. That ought to tell the story. 168 items. Well, it looks like they've got a bunch of cartridges, but... And some other electronic stuff so you might be a little better off buying from somebody like them but even so I doubt those cartridges have been tested this is probably just some flipper that bought a bunch of stuff at an estate sale for a little or nothing you know one of those give me ten dollars for everything and get it out of here kind of deals and often what you get when buying something like that from somebody that's just your average A to Z flipper is you get a cartridge that has not been tested and it arrives DOA and then you've got to go to the hassle of trying to get your money back for it. And I've seen many cases where someone would put the defective cartridge back into the packaging that the new cartridge came out of and instead of throwing it away they just throw it in a drawer somewhere and then 40 years later, when somebody finds it at the estate sale, they don't know the difference. So uh, it ends up on eBay, and you end up buying a cartridge that's actually uh, worn out. So you either got a chance of buying a new old stock cartridge that died from just sitting unused, or you have a, or you can end up with a, a used one that's worn out. So take your pick. That's why... I pretty much only buy my cartridges and needles from reputable uh, cartridge and needle vendors. And that way, if something's not right, then they'll stand behind it. Let's get on the VM site and see what he's getting for, what Gary's getting for 89T cartridges these days. Well, if the site will hurry up and respond, it's just sitting here spinning and not bringing up nothing. So, uh, here we go. Alright, fan steel 911. Okay, output voltage 1.3, tracking 6 to 8 grams. Uh, 911, SS11, SS13, and DD77 are genuine static. So anything else he has is going to be a fan steel knockoff DD 77 that's the 83 D which is a dual diamond 0.7 mil cartridge it was primarily used in the Library of Congress talking book players that one shows an output of 1.5 volts and is 25 bucks 911 s3 that's the green 78 fan steel only cartridge I'm okay with that one for 78 use. $22. A lot cheaper than the 70 something dollar one on eBay. 
911 SS11. That's a genuine aesthetic. Two one mil tips for mono micro groove. 1.1 volt output, 24 bucks. SS11A. Not sure about that one. Also one mil sapphire on both sides. Uh, with an output voltage of 1.5 volts, tracking at 10 grams. That one's 19 bucks. That's the cheapest one. Then we have the 911 SS73, which has a 0.7 mil sapphire LP tip on one side and a 3 mil sapphire 78 tip on the other. The only problem that's fan steel, and that one's 25 bucks. If I were going to buy any of these, I would just buy the SS11, which is an aesthetic original. And if I wanted to play 78, I suppose I would just have to buy the S3 and just swap the two cartridges out between record types. But I'm not even really keen about that, given the prices of these things, because when you a sapphire tip doesn't have a very long lifespan, uh, generally less than 100 hours. And when you wear that tip out, then you're right back to spending 25 plus dollars for a replacement cartridge so on that note i think it would be best just to modify these players once they get to the point where they need a new cartridge modify them to use something like a tetrad cartridge and add a preamp stage to boost the output and then when your needle wears out you're only spending less than 10 bucks for a replacement needle but we're not going to get into that today. We'll do that some other time when I've got uh, the time on my hands to fool with it. Right now i got more pressing things to deal with than this. But yeah, just as a reminder, if you tackle a project and you don't have the right parts to do it and or if you don't know what you're doing, then either hold off and obtain the right parts or just refer the repair to somebody who knows what they're doing. Don't, don't make a slop job out of the equipment and then possibly end up doing more damage to the equipment than what it had to uh, begin with. And up until the early 2000s, I was buying these prepackaged 89T replacements from the local parts house. Some were branded EVG, some were branded PRB, but they were all the same cartridge, uh, although not as good a quality as the original 89Ts from a static. These were about, they still worked, and these were about five dollars and some change at the local parts house. And then in the early 2000s, the local school district uh, discontinued the use of their record players and dumped them all. And when I went in there one day and bought the last two of these he had, he said enjoy them because there will be no more. He said the school district has no longer using records, so there goes our biggest customer for these things, and PRB has discontinued them anyway. So once, the, once these are gone, these two you just bought, that's going to be the end of them. And then from that point on, they've just been the ones that have shown up for sale on the various sites have, have just continued to go up, up, up in price. So, yeah, we need to make a video on how to modify these players to use something else so you won't have to pay ridiculous prices for an 89T cartridge to get your old uh, Califone, Audiotronics, Newcomb, etc. school record player back going again. This one has a price tag of 1995 on it with a 1998 date on it. I don't know who was selling this. This is one I got off of eBay. I think I bought three of them. Somebody listed them for like five bucks a piece and I snatched them up and this is the only one I've got left. Unfortunately, these appear to be dual LP, which most of them were by the late 90s. But still hang on to this one I might need it for something but yeah 
1995 for one of these and 1998 was a ripoff. I mean, Califon was still selling these in the late 90s, early 2000s for $5 and some change. So, so there you go. And just for fun, let's check the tracking. We'll add whatever number we get to 5 and that'll give us the tracking pressure. And it's registering as full, so that tells us this thing is tracking over 10 grams, which is too much. 6 to 8 is the recommended range. So let's try to set this pressure back down to a lower setting, and, and then we will try to find another uh, genuine static cartridge to put in here. Alright, I got the spring adjusted, and we're almost at 8 grams, so that's where it's going to stay. That spring was not easy to manipulate, so 8 grams is better than the 12 or 14 that it likely was to start with. Alright, there it is. Uh, and I borrowed another cartridge out of another record player, although I think the suspension on this one is pretty stiff too. I want to see if the other side is a true 78 needle or not. So LP side. Alright, flip it over. Nope, it's not. This is a dual this is a dual LP cartridge. Alright, here's one with a genuine 3 mil tip on the 78 side. Okay, there we go. Now, that's about all I'm going to do with this for now. Like I said later, we'll modify this to use a Tetrad, and I think it'll sound better, and we'll track records better. So, yeah, once we're through with this, this will put a, anything with the uh, Crosley name on it to shame. <laughs>